third kind of file allocation system, and probably the most popular, is what we call an indexed system. And there's different types of index systems out there. We've got a simple one-level index system here. The idea is you have a directory, and it points to a particular spot on the disk. In this case, it's block one. And you'll find that one of the blocks is an index block, this one here. So the file number one actually points to an index block, which also then has a list of blocks that it actually contains. In this particular case, it is block two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the order of the file. So if we want to, we could actually say the file is seven, six, five, four, three, two, if we wanted to. But for the moment, we basically know how to jump straight to the appropriate block using this index here. The advantage of this system, with this single simple file, if I want to read block six, for example, block six, it only needs two reads, okay? So I just need to read the index block, then I need to read my block list, which will typically read in memory, and it says, hey, block is block six. I'll just simply jump straight to the appropriate block, and there I am. Actually, that's block five. My apologies. Now, if we want to add another file, again, we just simply create file two. We say, in this case, it's going to say it's at block seven. The index block is at disk seven. And this contains a, um, a list of files, blocks I mean. It's got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, up to 23. Again, to read the fifth block in this file, all I have to do is read the index. I read this in memory, so in one single read, and I read count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know that number 6 is the actual file to read. In this case, it happens to be number 14. Boom. Got it one go. Literally two reads to get the sixth block in this file. Continuing on. Uh, file 3. Same situation. Index block 23, 24. And we have a list of blocks. 25 to 62, which contain the data. Do you notice... All the files have one extra block allocated for the index. So it's slightly less efficient, but that's good. We actually can make it's actually more efficient to read and write in this system. When we edit, in this case we want to delete, again all we have to do, delete the index and delete the file. It's gone. Same situation as before. Bit more of a problem though, trying to recreate a file once it's been deleted. We have to scan the disk a bit more carefully. And again, file number four, same situation, block 63, and the list of files. No problems there. Now, if I want to add blocks to file number one, all I have to do is edit the index block. I don't need to do anything else. So this block number one gets updated, and I simply put the new blocks. In this case, 71 to 100. With the fifth file, I need to fill up space from the previous deleted file. Again, a trivial exercise. Block 8, point to the index, and it contains blocks 11 to 20, which contain the file itself. Again, a very efficient system. Now, like the linked example, after many, many days, we can add files, delete files, edit files, move them around the disk. The block lists can get very confusing. As you can see, they're randomly allocated. Each block could be in any old order. But the number of reads and writes we actually perform is still in a very, very low order. Basically, two or three reads is all we need to grab a file, a block of a file. This is what we call a log logarithmic um, scale. And I'll talk about that shortly when we talk about complexity. So the average number of reads in this particular case is quite easy. It's two. This is of course assuming that the number of blocks we can fit inside this index block is sufficient for the size of the file. If the file gets extremely large, we might need a second block for the index 
to hold more blocks to more indexes. This is called multi-level indexing, or second or third indexing, but we'll talk about that a bit later.